Hi, welcome to the Semantics Lecture led by Universal Quantification. Now, we've seen uh, quantification, and we divide it into different types, and one of them is universal, which is one of the classical quantifiers. Universal quantification involves uh, describing essentially the totality of some set or another. Now, we'll see that it doesn't literally mean that, but we'll see how uh, we get to that. Now, an example of of a universal quantifier is all, or every, or in English, each. And these expressions differ a bit from each other in ways that will not be consequential just yet. But for right now, we just treat them all the same, and we'll focus on every, which is syntactically the easiest of the three. Now, let's take a sentence like this, every dog likes bacon. Uh, this is true or it's false, but what would make it true? Well, if we looked at every dog and said, does that dog like bacon, does that dog like bacon, does that dog like bacon, and so forth, and we go down the list, and if all of them like bacon, then we're good to go. When is the sentence false? Well, if there's a single dog out there that doesn't like bacon, the sentence is false. So every dog like to bacon requires us to check. And um, so we get that. So we get equals one. So we get that we get that this sentence equals one if and only if every dog likes bacon. Of course, what does that mean? That doesn't really help. How do we convert every dog likes bacon into something more formal? Well, we can go by the truth conditions, or we can go by the types, or we can do a formalization. So if we go by the type, we'll start with the syntax. And our syntax will look like this for now. Now, every dog likes bacon, so far so good. What are we going to do after that? Well, we know what dog is, know what the meaning of dog is, and we know what the meaning of likes bacon is. Right? If we assume that for now that bacon is a name of type E, we plug it into likes, and we get the meaning of the VP likes bacon, to be, you know, a set of things that like bacon. Now, the meaning of dog is the set of dogs or uh, the function that gets us the set of dogs. We built it through non-branching nodes, and it's of type ET. This is liking bacon. We built it through functional application. It's also of type ET. Now, these won't combine, of course, because the syntax doesn't combine them. Instead, we need every. We need every here, and this will combine, and then this will combine to make something of type T. Now, we saw with a uh, that, well, if you've already seen the lecture on existential quantification, which I recommend you do, uh, you will have seen that we can go through the types and come back to every. So if this is of type T, this is of type ET, this will either need to be of type E or of type ETT. Either one of those will work through functional application. <clears throat> now we know that this is not of type E because every dog does not refer to anything. It does not uh, you know, pick out the set of dogs in this case. Now, that leaves ETT, which is what we got with all, or with, sorry, with existential quantification. Uh, and then if that's the case, then this will tell us that every will need to be a function of type ET, ET, T. It's a very convoluted type, but pretty straightforward. If you look at it closely, it takes something of type ET, and then 
it gives you something of type ETT, which itself takes something of type ET and gives you T. You can think of it as a kind of transitive. So, you know, likes by itself is of type EET, and because it takes two entities, and then tells you about them. Every will take two properties and tell you about them, just like a, or the existential quantifier. The existential quantifier takes two properties and says there's something that has both of these properties. Every is going to be a little bit different. It's going to say that uh, you give it two properties and that every anything you can find in this one is going to have this one too. But how does it do that? So the first thing we want to think about are the two properties that we want. And it's going to, you know, the syntax will tell us. It's dog and liking bacon. So how do we say that? Well, if these are the properties, every dog likes bacon, we can think of it this way. Every x such that x is in the set of dogs is also in the set of bacon. Or oh, sorry. <laughs> is in the set of things that like bacon. Now, we could say this. Every x is such that x is a dog and x likes bacon. Now, we can replace every x with every individual. Every individual is a dog and likes bacon. Does that work? Is that the truth conditions we want? All right, well, let's see. Every individual is a dog and likes bacon. So that would be false if there is an individual. If there is an individual that is not a dog. Because this is everything in the set of individuals. Every individual is a dog, and it also likes bacon. But there are things that aren't dogs. So this cannot be the meaning that we want. This would also mean that everything likes bacon. And we don't want that either. There are things that don't like bacon. So how do we make sure that we're just talking about dogs? Well, think about that. You know, if every dog likes bacon, then how do you judge that to be true? Well, you look at a dog. You look, at, you look through all the individuals. How do we tell that every dog likes bacon? Well, we say, does this individual like bacon? Does this one? Does this one? Does this individual like bacon? Wait, this is a cat. We don't care if it likes bacon. Whether the cat likes bacon or not is completely irrelevant to whether or not every dog likes bacon, because it's not a cat. So we only care about the dogs. So how do we restrict, so far, the domain of things to dogs? Well, the way that we do that is through an if clause. We say, well, if this is a dog, then it likes bacon. If it's not a dog, remember, we don't care. That's how if clauses work. When you don't meet the first condition, then it doesn't really matter what the second condition is. So if it's a cat, then who cares? If it's a dog, then we check. If it's a dog, then we check. If it's a dog, then we check. So we don't want to say that X is a dog and X likes bacon. We want to say if X is a dog, then x likes bacon. So that would be the truth condition for every dog likes bacon. This would mean that it's zero if and only if there is an individual that is a dog and does not like bacon. So it's true if we're talking about cats that don't like bacon, that's fine. But it's only false if there's a dog that doesn't. This is the truth condition we want. Now again, 
we've seen that we can replace x as a dog with the function dog of x equals 1. And then we can replace like bacon with equals 1. And then we can affect here. We can change this. Now, instead of writing every, we write the universal quantifier with the symbol upside down a, or a turn to a. So we say, we have this, and we read it as for all, or for any. For all x in d sub e, if x is a dog, then x likes bacon. That's what our sentence will mean. And so now we just have to work our way back through the functions to get to the meaning for every. Right? Recall that we need two functions. We need, we need the function that gives us the dogs, and we need us the functions that, that would give us the liking of bacon, the likers of bacon. So we can simply do that. So I've written f here, and the reason is because we don't really, you know, the meaning of every is going to be the same no matter what, right? If we have every dog likes bacon, then we get dog here. If we have every marmot likes bacon, then we have marmot instead of dog. If we have every child likes bacon, we put child instead of dog, and so forth. So, if we have a lambda expression, we're going to need an argument, lambda. The same goes for bacon, or bacon liking. If we change the VP, to uh, hates bacon, or likes cheese, or runs a quarter mile in two minutes, and that sort of thing. It doesn't matter. It's a function. We plug it in. It's going to be whatever the verb phrase is. And we know that this is going. This is what we need for several reasons. One is the truth conditional reasons that I just mentioned. We can switch these out. And if we switch, we can switch it out like that, that suggests an argument. An argument requires a lambda condition. We know the type that every has to be. It has to be of type ET, ETT. So it has to have an argument of type ET, and then a second argument of type ET. That's what we've got. We know that these are of type ET because it takes an individual as its argument and gives you one. ET. ET. So in that sense, what we end up with is exactly the kind of meaning that we want. This gets us the composition, and this gets us the truth conditions. And that's going to apply for uh, any of the other uh, universal quantifiers. Well, there will be some other issues that we'll want to talk about, about the domain, for instance. But for now, this is what we want for the meaning of every.